Welcome, welcome, future pilots. This is Nick from Part Time Pilot. So, this is the third video on magnetic compasses, and this is on magnetic dip air. So, this is the tricky one. This is the big one. In the two previous videos, we covered variation and then we covered deviation. Magnetic dip air, it's confusing because there's so many nuances to it. There's there's no dip air if you're this there's some if you're this and it varies if you're between here and here so there's a lot of different nuances to remember about magnetic dip air so it's gonna take a couple times for you to sort of let this ingest this topic so i uh always recommend you know reading it listening to it watching it and then testing yourself on it again and again that repetition but hopefully i'm gonna do the best I can with a cool animation for you guys to try and help get you guys to understand what it is magnetic dip is doing. All right, so when you are turning, accelerating, or decelerating while traveling in an easterly or westerly direction, your compass will experience magnetic dip unless you are flying near the equator. So if we break this down, if you are flying north, or south you won't have magnetic dip and or if you're flying right on the equator you won't have magnetic dip and then also in straight and level unaccelerated flight your compass will not have any magnetic dip so if you're straight and level unaccelerated that means you're not accelerating you're you're not speeding up you're not slowing down and you're not turning left or right or anything like that then you won't have any magnetic dip. This is why they say to calibrate your heading indicator with your compass, you have to be in straight and level on accelerated flight. So you're not calibrating your heading indicator to a compass that is currently experiencing a, ma a magnetic dip air. So again, straight and level on accelerated flight, no air. Traveling directly north and south, no air. Traveling on the equator, no air. But everywhere in between, which is going to be a lot of cases when we're flying, there's going to be a magnetic dip air. The amount of magnetic dip and its direction on the compass depends on what latitude and hemisphere you are flying in. The compass, so in the, the, here's the sort of the reason and explanation why it does that. The compass tends to align itself with the geomagnetic field and dip towards the closest pole. That's why it changes depending on whether you're in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere so these sort of green angles or triangles these sharp triangles are meant to be sort of the compass needle that is aligning itself with these magnetic field lines and as you can see the angle these magnetic field line field lines make in the atmosphere with the earth changed at what latitude you're at and as you can see at the equator, there's no angle to it. So there's no magnetic dip air. But then as you get higher and higher north, that angle gets more and more and more and more until the maximum at the highest latitude. Because remember, our latitudes are like this going from the equator up. Now I'm going to focus more mostly here on the northern hemisphere because all the students probably you know, there's a lot of students, the majority of my students are from the United States because I'm FAA certified to teach in the United States. So that's why I'm going to focus on the Northern Hemisphere. But all everything is basically the opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the same airs. It's just sort of opposite. The amount of dip varies depending on how far away the compass is from a pole. That's what we talked about with the, these lines of latitude. It changes depending on where you're located. If you're flying, so if you're flying here, it's gonna be different. Your magnetic dip air is gonna be different than if you're flying up there. At the pole, the dip is at its maximum. So that's what I just mentioned. So up here at the pole, at these high latitudes, it's gonna be a maximum of 90 degrees. And then at the equator, the dip is negligible at its minimum of zero degrees. Between the equator and the pole, the value of the dip can be approximated by the actual latitude number. So that's kind of a cool thing. So if you are flying at a latitude of say, of say 32, like in San Diego, so that'd be about right here. So that's a 32 degree latitude. 
then your maximum amount of magnetic dip air can be approximated to be about 32 or I would probably just say 30 degrees of magnetic dip air. So whatever latitude you're at, the maximum amount of dip, magnetic dip air can be approximated by that latitude. So here we have a visual representation of what we just talked about. We have the globe, we have the, our aircraft pointed due north on the left hand side here near the equator and we have our compass reading of, of north. Now I mentioned if you're flying near the equator you're not going to have that magnetic dip air but between the equator and the north pole as you can see this aircraft is going to move to that's where that magnetic dip air starts to happen. Now if you are flying straight and level unaccelerated, you don't get that dip air, remember. And also, if you're flying due north, you won't get that dip air as well. So here, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see this aircraft fly to the north, and you'll see, on watch the compass. The compass reading does not change. This is a case of no dip air as that aircraft, even though it's in the magnetic dip region between the equator and the North Pole, we don't see the air. And this aircraft here has no airs as it's traveling along that equator going west, but then as it gets above the equator and starts to accelerate and turn, you start to see some airs, which we'll get into here in a sec. All right, so let's go into more detail on this magnetic dip air. When the aircraft is accelerating or decelerating on an easterly or westerly heading, there's an effect as we talked about. If accelerating, the compass will dip towards the closest pole. So to the nor it'll dip to the north in the northern hemisphere, and it'll dip to the south in the southern hemisphere. If decelerating, the compass will dip towards the farthest pole. So it'll dip to the south if you're flying in the northern hemisphere, and it'll dip to the north when you're in the southern hemisphere. There is no effect when accelerating or decelerating on a heading of north or south as we talked about before. Pilots in the Northern Hemisphere can remember this by the acronym ANDS or ANDS, acronym or mnemonic device ANDS. Accelerate North, decelerate South. Pilots in the Southern Hemisphere can use SAND, South accelerate, North decelerate. So pilots out there in the Northern Hemisphere use ANDS, accelerate North, decelerate South. That means when you're not flying North or South, so anything in between, a direct north or direct south heading, you're going to have an acceleration or deceleration air. If you accelerate, your magnetic dip is going to dip towards the north, that closest pole. If you decelerate, it's going to dip towards the south, that furthest pole. In this first visual example, we have an aircraft pointed due north with our compass on north, and it's going to speed up, and then it's going to slow down. So it has that acceleration and deceleration. But if you watch that entire time, our compass did not change or deviate or have any magnetic dip air off of that true north. It stayed correct on that true north. You can see it again, speed up, slow down. We have an acceleration and a deceleration, but no air because we are flying due north. And you don't get this air when you're flying due north. All right, so here we have an aircraft on a westerly heading. Our compass reads to the west. It's traveling from east to west and we're in the northern hemisphere. So what you're gonna see is this compass flying at a certain speed and then accelerating. And when we accelerate in the northern, northern hemisphere, our compass is gonna have a dip or a dip air to the closest pole, which is the northern, the north pole. So watch as it accelerates, watch the compass. It changes, even though we haven't changed direction, we're still flying to the west. It goes to about 300, which is towards the north. It dips to the north right there. We'll watch it one more time. And it's dipping to that closest pole. All right, so here we have our aircraft again lined up to the west, same thing in the northern hemisphere, but now we're gonna reverse it. We're gonna start at a faster speed and we're gonna decelerate. So when we decelerate, it actually is going to dip to the furthest pole. As you see that, you see the compass change. We'll watch that again. It starts at west, we're pointed west the whole time, but as we slow down, we get a dip to the furthest pole, which is the south, so it dips towards 240. So again, accelerate, it dips to the north in the northern hemisphere. Decelerate, which you see here, it dips to the south, the furthest pole, which is 240, and you get that magnetic dip air. Now remember, we said when you're in unaccelerated straight and level flight, there's no air. So that means even if we're not speeding up or slowing down, we're not accelerating or decelerating, but we're turning, that is technically an acceleration because we're changing our vector which is a both a speed and direction. So we're changing that direction of the aircraft. 
So when the aircraft is turning, there's also an air. For the northern hemisphere, when on easterly or westerly heading and a turn to the north is made, magnetic compass will lag behind the actual heading and a pilot should undershoot their final heading. So this is a tough one for people to understand. We'll break it down with an example here in a bit. The magnitude of the leg is approximately equal to the aircraft's current latitude. So remember our example, we're flying in San Diego where the latitude, the location in San Diego, the longitude latitude, that latitude is 32 degrees. So the magnitude of the leg, that maximum leg is approximately equal to the aircraft's current latitude. So if I'm flying in San Diego and I turn from east or west heading to a heading of north, my compass will lag behind the actual heading by 32 degrees. And I want to undershoot the final heading, whatever head, let's say it's a 000 heading, that you know, true north heading or magnetic north heading. I want to undershoot that by 32 degrees because of my latitude. That's an approximation. If the final heading is exactly north, like in that example, then the pilot should undershoot the final heading by the amount equal to the aircraft's current latitude. So that's what I was just talking about. In San Diego, the current latitude is 32 degrees. So if I'm if from making a turn to a heading exactly north, it's that maximum amount of dip air, which is equal to our latitude, so 32 degrees. And for all final headings between west and north or east and north, you know, not directly to the north, the amount of undershoot can be estimated linearly and I have a good figure to show you what I'm talking about. So here we're estimating the maximum and I have this note down here this image is based off a location of 30 degrees latitude. So about San Diego, California. So that 30 degrees latitude is going to be our maximum amount of magnetic dip. So we're up here we're undershooting because we're we're turning from east or west to the north. So we're undershooting and so we have maximum at 30 degrees here when we turn directly to the north. But if we turn to the northwest, right, 315 degrees, we're going to estimate that air linearly. So if we were to just not turn and continue west, we would have zero degree air. And then if we go to the northwest, it's halfway between the west and north, so it's gonna be half that maximum value of 30 or 15 degrees. Okay, and then if we're you know, turning to 300 right here, we're a third of the way to the north from west. So it'll be a third of the maximum. We're, we're doing a linear interpolation along the way. So that's only 10 degrees. And then 330 would be 20 degrees because it's two thirds of the way to the north. Same thing if we're traveling to the east and we want to turn to the north. If we make a full turn to the north here, it's going to be that 30 degrees. And then if we make a 30 degree turn towards the north to 060, then it'll only be 10 degrees. If we make a 60 degree turn to 030, then it'll be 20 degrees. And then if we were right to go directly to half to 045 degrees right here, it would be half or 15 degrees. So here we have an aircraft on a westerly heading in the northern hemisphere at about a latitude of 30 degrees. That means if we make a turn to the to direct north, we're gonna get a magnetic dip leg air of about equal to our latitude of 30 degrees. Now in this example, because of the way our globe is situated, by the time we finish our turn, we're gonna be up in Northern Canada where our latitude will be much higher than 30 degrees. But let's just assume it stays 30 degrees the whole time because one turn is not gonna make you change your latitude in real life. Now, we have two compasses. We have the compass on the bottom, which is the compass in your aircraft. This is the real life compass, the one with magnetic dip air. The one on top, this is the world's perfect compass with no airs, the one that this does not exist, right? But I want you to watch and compare the differences between the two as we make this turn. The one on the top with no airs is gonna match the nose of your aircraft perfectly, but the one on the bottom, as you turn, is gonna have that leg air about equal to our latitude. So as you can see, we're starting to make that turn and the one on the bottom is behind the perfect compass on top. And then if we pause it, our nose is due north, our perfect compass, the one on the top is due north, but the one on the bottom is at 330. It's 30 degrees lagging behind because that is equal, that's about the latitude that we are flying at. 
at 30 degrees. So we have to undershoot. We have to finish our turn at 330 so that we're actually at that true north. So let's watch this again in slow-mo. So as we start our turn, the compass in our nose, the compass with no airs in our nose is getting to 330, but we're behind on the compass on the bottom. And when we get to true north, this is right now where we want to end our turn, where the compass in our aircraft is at 330. That means we undershoot by 30 degrees so that we actually roll out on the heading we want, which is the compass heading of due north. So let's do that again, but instead of turning from the west to direct north, we're going to turn from the west to the northwest. So instead of 360 as our final heading, it's going to be 315. So what this means is that instead of using the maximum magnetic dip air to undershoot, we're going to use half of that because the northwest is between halfway between the west and north. So half of our maximum is 15. Half of 30 is 15. Remember again, our maximum is equal to about our latitude. So watch the compass in our aircraft. It's going to now lag 15 degrees behind our perfect compass. And if we pause it right here, look at our aircraft. It's pointed. Our nose is pointed to the northwest. Our compass with no airs is pointed at 315. But the compass in our aircraft, the compass with the airs is at 300. It's lagging by 15 degrees. So if we watch this again, you're watching the compass in your aircraft as you fly, you know that you're gonna have a leg of 15 degrees, so you're gonna to wanna to stop your turn when the compass in your aircraft says about 300. You wanna undershoot by that 15 degrees. So what if we're on a northerly heading? So before we were talking about we're on an easterly or westerly heading, what if we're on a northerly heading and we turn to the east or west? Well, in this case, the medic, there is an air, but it's only momentary. So this is a momentary error when our final heading is to the east or west. Because remember, once we finally get to east or west heading, there's not going to be an error for us. Magnetic compass will lag behind the actual heading initially. If the final heading is exactly east or west, then no undershooting of the final heading is required by the pilot. That's what I was talking about. Uh, the leg shows up as a momentarily false turn in the opposite direction when turning from the north heading. So what you're gonna see, you're tra we're traveling to the north. We turn and it's going to lag behind your actual, the actual direction your nose is pointing. Your compass is going to lag behind in that opposite direction. So it's gonna look like a false turn in the opposite direction. It's gonna sort of, you turn if you're going to the north and we turn to the west, right? You would expect that compass needle to go to the left as you turn to the left. It's going to momentarily kind of kick to the right before lagging behind you that whole turn. But once you finally get to direct west, it'll catch up to you and it'll be fine. If you're not directly west, right, and again, if we're, your, your final turn is from, you go from the north to the northwest here, then you will have a leg and you'll want to undershoot, again, estimated by the latitude that you're at. So in this example, we're gonna have an aircraft flying due north and then it's gonna to turn to the west. Now we talked about when we're flying to the east or the west and you make a turn to the north, you're gonna have that leg air that's gonna stay with you the whole time so that you have to undershoot your final heading. Now we're not gonna to have to do this when we're turning from north, but we're still gonna see an air and it's gonna show up immediately at the very start of the turn as a turn in the opposite direction. So. Watch the compass without airs. It's going to match the nose throughout the turn here, but the compass with airs, it's actually gonna show initially a turn in the wrong direction towards the east. Now, we'll watch this again. So again, I want you to watch watch the, the compass without airs. As we make a turn to the west, it's starting to change to the west. And if we pause it there, look at the compass in your aircraft. It actually is showing about 020, 025. That's actually towards the east. So it initially shows a turn in the wrong direction when you're traveling to the north and you're turning off the north, either to the east or west, in this example, to the west. So we get that false reading to the east on the compass in our aircraft. And then it catches up by the end of the turn and when we're traveling to the west, it's completely fine. So again here, turn in the opposite direction and then you kind of see it catch up and then it finally reads correctly when we're looking to the west. Okay, so now what about turning to the south? So we talked about when we're on an easterly or westerly heading. So east, west or east, and we turn to the north. And then we talked about when we're on the north and we turn to the east or west. But what about if we 
are on east or west, and then we turn to the south. What happens when we make this turn? So when on an easterly or westerly heading and a turn to the south is made, the magnet leads ahead of the actual heading and a pilot should overshoot their final heading. So before, when we make a turn to the north, we undershoot. Now when we make a turn to the south, we need to overshoot the final heading. The magnitude of the lead is approximately, approximately equal to the aircraft's current latitude. So again, same thing, we can still use that current latitude to approximate that maximum amount of lead air or dip air. If the final heading is exactly south, then the pilot should overshoot the final heading by the amount equal to the aircraft's current latitude. So again, in our San Diego example, about 30 degrees latitude, if it's exactly south, if your final turn is to exactly south, then you wanna use that maximum dip air value, which is equal to your current latitude of 30 degrees for the example of San Diego. If you're somewhere else, it, it would, that maximum amount would be different. And then for all final headings between a heading of west or south or between east and south, the amount of overshoot can be estimated linearly. So again, the same exact thing we just went through, but instead of undershooting, we're overshooting our final heading. So here again, we have this example. So we're, trout, we're on a west heading or an east heading. And if we turn, and again, we're we're Look at the note, we're using San Diego as an example. So our maximum dip air is 30 degrees. If we make this turn to a heading of, of directly south, again, we're going to use that maximum value of 30 degrees, but we're going to overshoot when turning to this heading. So instead of up here, we undershoot. Now here we're overshooting. And then again, we can linearly interpolate between. So if we're traveling here to the west, and then we turn to the southwest, which is right here at, what would that be, 225 degrees, right? So if we turn to the directly southwest heading, then it would be half of 30 degrees, which is our maximum, so it would be 15 degrees. And then let's say we're over here traveling to the east, and we make a 30 degree turn so that we're on a heading of 120. It's not quite south southeast, it's a little bit, it's east-southeast, right? And it, so it would. it's a third of the way to directly south. So a third of our total magnetic dip air, which is 30 degrees. So is that 10 degrees here. So again, same thing. We're just overshooting that instead of undershooting it. And we'll show you kind of what that looks like on the actual compass. So here's another example. This time we're going to travel west and then we're going to turn to a south. And in this example, let's imagine we're flying at a latitude of 15 degrees such that our maximum dip air is 15 degrees. Obviously our aircraft up there in Canada, that's going to be more around 50 degrees latitude or something like that. But let's imagine it's 15 degrees latitude for this example. So as we turn down from the west to the south, look at the compass without airs. It's matching the nose of the aircraft. If we pause it here, look at the compass in our aircraft. It's already on south. It's leading by that 15 degrees. And if we start it again and we let the nose of our aircraft actually get to south, now our compass without airs is at south but our compass on our aircraft is ahead. It's actually past south by 15 degrees. So it's overshot by 15 degrees. So what we wanna do is when we're actually flying and we're using this compass in our aircraft with the airs, is we wanna roll out of our turn when we've overshot it by 15 degrees. So let's watch this again. So we're watching the compass in our aircraft and we're gonna see it go turn towards the south and we won't roll out of our turn until we see that hit 15 degrees or the value of our maximum dip air, which is equal about to our latitude, which we said in this example was 15 degrees. And so again, just like we said, okay, what if we're not on the east or west heading, but what if we're on a south southerly heading and then we turn to the east or west? Again, same thing, we're just flipping it the magnetic compass leads ahead of the actual heading instead of legs. It, uh, if the final heading is exactly east or west, then again, no overshoot of the final heading is required by the pilot. If it's in between, again, we just talked about, you're going to estimate it based off your maximum latitude and you're going to linearly interpolate to whatever that final heading is. And if we're on a southerly heading and we turn to the east or west, and our final heading is either east or west, 
the lead is going to show up as a correct term, but at a faster rate that is, than is actually occurring. The compass is leading you. So again, as we're, we're looking at the compass and it says, you know, 180, we're heading directly south. And then we turn to the west. We expect that compass needle again to move to the left on our compass. And the direction our nose is actually pointed is actually going to be slower than where that needle is. So that needle is going to go faster than our actual nose is in the actual sky. So it's going to turn at a faster, your compass is going to turn at a faster rate than your nose actually is initially. But by the time you get to east or west heading, that air is going to be gone and there, there's no overshooting needed. So pilots use the acronym UNOS to help remember this phenomena, undershoot north, overshoot south. So again, remember, we talked about it's the same thing, but just flipped. So when you're turning to the a north heading, it's going to be, you want to undershoot. And if you're turning to a south heading, you want to overshoot. And if you're on a north heading and you turn to the east or west, you don't have to undershoot your final heading, but it's going to still lag initially and it's going to show up as a turn in the wrong direction. And the same thing, if you're on a south heading and you turn to the east or west, again, you don't have to overshoot, but your needle is still going to lead and show at that faster rate. So UNOS, if you remember UNOS, you can sort of remember all those errors. And the opposite, again, is true in the Southern Hemisphere. And in this example, we have an aircraft traveling to the south and it's going to turn away from south. Remember, when we had an aircraft traveling to the north and turning away from north, we didn't have to undershoot our final heading, but we still saw that leg air in a t as a turn in the opposite direction. So here, we're not going to have to overshoot our final heading for the lead air, but we're still going to get this lead air and it's going to show up as the compass in our aircraft with the airs is going to show a faster rate of turn. So as you can see, watch our aircraft start to turn and look at the compass in our aircraft. It's already over 210, but our compass without airs and our nose is just started its turn from south. So the compass in our aircraft is leading the turn. It's ahead of us in the turn of where our nose really is. So now if we keep it going and then we pause it right here, look at the compass in our aircraft. It says we're already at a west heading, but look at the nose. We're not pointed west yet and the compass without airs does not show a west heading yet. So it leads us in this case when we're turning off from south. So let's watch this again. We're traveling south and we make a turn to the west. The compass of the aircraft jumps at a fast rate and gets to west quicker than the compass without airs. But by the time, we'll watch this one more time, by the time we get to west, both compasses match. We don't have to overshoot when we turn from south to the west.